All righty. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We really pre appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. So I'm going to go over a few housekeeping announcements for our attendees before we get started. So for our attendees, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. And I do highly recommend doing that as it's your best way to interact with uh, our panelists here. Um, for attendees, your camera and microphone are off. So the panelists, they can't see or hear you, meaning the Q&A button is, that, is your only way to get your questions asked and answered. So I highly recommend using it whenever you need uh, any, have any questions. This is just one of many different sessions happening. So feel free to sign up for an additional session uh, at strivescan.com backslash Carolinas. And this presentation is being recorded and again, and will be made available in about a week at that same website, strivescan.com slash backslash Carolinas. So without any further ado, I am going to stop sharing my screen and introduce our first presenter from Goldsmith University of London. Hello everyone, just gonna share my screen really fast. All right, my name is Will. I am the International Officer for the Americas at Goldsmiths University of London. I am based in Brooklyn, New York, but um, as you can perhaps tell by our name, uh, Goldsmiths is a top tier public research institution in London, England. Our population on campus is around 10,000 students, extremely diverse. Uh, nearly 35% of our students come from outside of the UK, and uh, we have a very sizable LGBTQ plus population, first generation population on campus, and more than half our students are students of color. We also have about 55 research centers and units on our campus that are run by Goldsmiths or in conjunction with other University of London institutions. Um, so we take great pride in our research and citations. We also have committed to a Green New Deal on campus and we are committing to carbon neutrality by 2025. And to that end, we have banned beef on our campus, single-use plastics, divested our endowment from fossil fuels. Um, sorry, I'm realizing my screen share is paused and it will not resume. Um, hold on one second. Um, let's try that again. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, great. All right. Um, back on track. Um, so uh, our campus is located about 10 minutes southeast of the city center. We are a single site campus, so all of your courses will be held in this yellow dotted line here. We have residence halls located both on and just off campus. A overground station is literally right on top of our campus at New Cross Gate, and that really gives you uh, great connections to the rest of London, um, easy to get to all those internships and work placements that we offer here at Goldsmiths. And London is obviously a, a economic, cultural, and political hub for the UK. It's a city of around 12 million people. On campus, we also have a nice college green, which you can take advantage of some of the sunnier days that London has to offer. Our academics focus on the arts and humanities. We do social sciences, business management. We are among the top 100 schools in the world for arts and humanities, and eight of our 18 departments are among the world's top 50. We're extremely well known for our media communication school, and that includes our screen school for film and television, and also our school of journalism, and also art and design. Uh, students who want to study art and design at Goldsmiths each get their own studio space, and it's a really great place to hone your practice. We also are ranked in the among the top students in the UK for the quality and international significance of our research and citations. And we have around 75 undergraduate programs on our campus in three faculties. Our um, degree programs are three years in length and it's all direct entry. So you apply directly to a degree program. Popular programs for Americans are the ones I already mentioned and also computer science, psychology, international relations and politics and music and theater. Our application is through UCAS. We are test optional for this year and next year and we do require 3.0 unweighted GPA to apply. The university and college application service is something you'll hear a lot about today. Um, and it is sort of like an aggregate application for all UK schools. And you can apply to up to five universities through UCAS. 
our tuition ranges from around 20,000 to 27,000 pounds uh, per year, uh, sorry, uh, US dollars per year. That's a conversion for you. Um, we also do offer international scholarships and we accept federal loans and plus loans. The total cost of attendance when factoring in things like food, transportation, housing, visa fees, health insurance is anywhere between 36 and 39,000 US dollars per year. Um, this can be significantly less than out of state public or private institutions in the US, which uh, these days are running upwards of $75,000 per year. Our accommodation is mixed gender housing, and we do guarantee uh, a room for you in your first year as international students. After that, typically you'll move off campus into private housing. We have accommodation um, you know, scattered around Southeast London, but most of our halls are within a 10 minute commute or walk from campus. You also have joint housing with the University of London. So if you wish to live a little bit further away from campus, that's another option for you. But students will always have their own room with their own bathroom. And you'll also have a shared kitchen and living space inside your suite. We put a lot of emphasis on careers at Goldsmiths as well. And our career service places students in work placements and internships every year. We offer around 1,500 of them. We also are one of the top um, performers in London for our graduates finding work or postgraduate study in their field within six months. For the budding entrepreneurs in the room, we have around 15% of our population that starts their own business within one year of graduation. And to that end, we are opening a business uh, incubator on campus this spring. We also have a vast alumni network throughout the world and around 3,000 alumni in the U.S. And um, outside of school, you can join over 120 different clubs and activities and over 20 different sports options on campus. So if you have any questions about coming to Goldsmiths, my email address is on the screen. And thank you so much for uh, allowing me to present, present tonight. Great. Thank you so much, Will. Uh, next, we will hear from the University of Manchester. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Daniel Lee. I'm an international officer for the University of Manchester. Uh, I represent Britain's largest single site university and the University of Manchester was established in 1824. So we have a proud history of innovation and world's firsts, um, some of which I'm going to just briefly mention here. So in 1917, we have our Nobel Prize winner, Ernest Rutherford, who split the atom. In 1948, Kilburn and Freddie Williams uh, built the world's first stored program computer. And in 57, we have Lovell who built the world's largest steerable radio telescope. Um, the University of Manchester is part of the UK's Russell Group, which identifies 24 uh, world-class research intensive universities. So some people understand uh, the, the Russell Group to be the UK's version of the Ivy Leagues. So we have a unique vision and we are proud to boast 25 Nobel laureates uh, amongst our staff and students. And we have two currently teaching on campus in the physics and math. Um, we're the top UK university for two years running for social and environmental impact, which is all part of our vision. Some rankings for us, we are ranked 27th in the world, um, sixth in the UK, and eighth in Europe, not to mention our individual programs are highly ranked as well. 83% of research is judged to be world leading or internationally excellent, which speaks to us being a member of the Russell Group. And we are first choice for graduate employers in the UK. We've had some students from our engineering uh, work and build Formula One cars, Formula One cars in Monte Carlo. Uh, we have regular recruiters uh, of of global companies such as uh, Jaguar and Apple and AstraZeneca, which is really important right now that we're developing or they're developing uh, the vaccine, um, Deloitte, IBM and BBC, just to name a few. So looking at some of our popular courses, uh, we have our three faculties, which is our faculty of science and engineering, our faculty of biology, medicine and health and our faculty of humanities. So these are some of the popular courses to come out of that. We have popular degrees, which are studied at the undergraduate level in the UK, which include law and medicine. These are undergraduate programs. 
um, but some popular courses as well, sociology and criminology, physics and math, computer science and AI, as you would assume, politics and international relations and creative writing. So we are home to over 40,000 students from 160 nationalities. Um, over 10,000 international students are on our campus. So that makes us one of the most international and diverse universities in the UK. The university and the city are the most affordable places or one of the most affordable places for students seeking a degree in the UK. The living cost plus tuition together is about or ranges from $40,000 to $48,000 and that excludes the School of Medicine because that works uh, a bit differently. And so when it comes to your career, uh, we offer amazing opportunities and options for you as a student, um, whether it's you at university or once you graduate. So most of our degrees give you the option to integrate a year abroad, also known as the year in industry. It's also called um, the sandwich year. Uh, it's a graduate level internship that is relevant to your degree. So if you're studying marketing, that's going to be a marketing sandwich year. You'll also have opportunities for summer internships, for volunteering, uh, for outreach programs, and even a part-time job while you're at the university. So we're there to support your, your journey, your career, or building of your career. We have our career services, which is exactly what you think it is. It offers students one-to-one -one, um, mock appointments or mock interviews. It helps with CVs. And there's a list of available resources available to you as a student through our career services. Our campus, uh, we are located in the second largest city in the UK. So Manchester has some of its own firsts in addition to the university. So Manchester City is the birthplace of vegetarianism. It's the birthplace of uh, feminism and the Industrial Revolution. Our university has over 400 clubs and societies. So it ranges from sports, uh, football, debate, uh, there's various affinity groups. So there's something for everyone if you want to be a part of a smaller community. We have the accommodation guarantee for international students. So the best news to come out of that is all rooms are single occupancy. You will never share a room with a roommate, but you will share some spaces like the kitchen, particularly if you decide to to, to select the self-catered option and cook for your cook for yourself. Some wonderful pictures of our campus. Uh, we have over half a million alumni in 190 countries. So they're all doing amazing work in various fields and we look forward to students joining that community. Uh, we encourage students to look at our website, our prospectuses, which are found on our website. Um, they're all very useful. Visiting the university virtually at this time can give you a good idea of what it's like to be a student and what it's like to study and live in the UK, particularly in Manchester. And uh, we want students to uh, also speak to current students. We use UniBuddy on our website. So if you go to any of our country pages, UniBuddy will pop up and allows you to connect with current students on our campus. And if you would like to connect directly with me, I'd be happy to speak to you. My email is on the screen, but I will also put it in the chat. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Next, we will hear from Berto Education. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Lainey. I'm with Verto Education. Um, Verto is a little bit different, um, but if you're in this um, presentation, that you, then you probably are interested in getting outside of the States, at least for a little bit. My computer is also being super slow, um, so I apologize about that. Um, but with Berto Education, what we offer is a fully accredited first semester of college traveling abroad. Um, you can do just one semester or a full year with Berto. It's totally up to you. And then you take those credits that you're earning with us to your college of choice. So you can take those to um, any university and we'll make sure those credits will transfer. We do partner with 58 colleges. Um, four of those are international. So you can stay abroad if you're interested in that. Um, our mission overall as an organization is to provide higher education and international travel for more students across the globe, um, no matter what their background is, no matter where they're trying to get to. So that really shakes down into three main pillars. The first being the best first year of college um, that just looks at our semesters, how they're shaped. Um, and then the second pillar is admissions to a great fit school, which is about our 
partner schools that I mentioned. And the third is affordability, which is obviously very important. So the best first year of college, this can mean a lot of things for a lot of different people. Um, within Averto semesters, there are three main points that we're really looking at to, to come across to our students. So the first is connecting to the world. Um, and the connecting to the world is just looking at what our semesters are in a, in a general overview. Um, so you have six different options you can travel to. Five of them are international. One of them is domestic, it's in Hawaii. Um, we have on-campus semesters and field semesters that do vary a little bit. Um, we're really trying to make this be a more personal connection for our students. We don't want you just to be, you know, tourists traveling around. Um, we're hoping to make that experiential learning on a deeper level so that you're able to really connect with communities that you're staying in. The second point is to sharpen your mind. So academics, um, this is a college semester. So you are taking college courses. Every student is taking four classes per semester. Um, and as I mentioned, earning 16 credits. So these are all those freshman gen eds that you're going to need to take regardless of your major. So you might as well do it traveling around the world. We are discussion-based. Um, we're not really focusing on tests or exams, anything like that. Um, and as I mentioned previously, we are very experiential. So when we're learning about things in the classroom, we're taking that outside of the classroom as much as we can. We do have small class sizes, 20 to 25 students max, and one-on-one um, -on -one mentorship with our professors and our students. And the third point is discover yourself. Obviously traveling outside of your bubble is gonna be a huge, hugely impactful experience for everybody. Um, you're building up self-confidence, that adaptability, and really just, just setting yourself for, up for success um, when you do hit the ground running at your university of choice. So our on-campus semesters, we have three. One is in England, one is in Spain, and one is in Italy. Um, you can get a quick little tidbit of information of what our semester in London looks like. Again, you're only taking four of these classes, but you're living in a student residence on our on-campus semesters. These are more like traditional study abroad. Um, so there is that independence and freedom that you have to travel around and, and you know, find your favorite coffee shop when you're not in class. We do some excursions together as a group. So you'll be with your Virto students um, as well as with our program leaders. And these are fun, they're interesting, some are historic um, and tying into those classes that you're taking. Field semesters are pretty different. They're almost like a gap year feel in a lot of ways. Um, you're still taking all college courses, um, but we're traveling around a lot. So we're staying in different locations in smaller villages and rural communities. And you're staying at base houses with your small group of 20 students, um, with your program leaders and professors. Um, these are very hands-on. So if you're taking, um, if you're taking a cultural anthropology class, for example, in Australia, we're um, spending that time really learning about the um, the Aborigines in Australia. So um, very hands-on, a lot more adventurous. We do a lot of different excursions with a field of semesters, but they're all just really incredible. We do have a Change the World Honors Program. This is a full year with Berto. It's honors level classes. Um, we're looking for really high motivated and academic, um, academically achieving students. Definitely check this out on our website. Second pillar, admissions to a great fit school. So as I mentioned, we partner with quite a few. Um, when you apply to Virto, we are a free application. We're non-binding. We do have a minimum 2.5 GPA. We are test optional. You can apply to up to five partner colleges with our application. And that gives you a holistic review to those schools and a quicker turnaround for your admissions decision. This is just a couple of our partner universities. Um, we can't fit them all in one slide. Definitely check it out on our website. Um, we do have 27 of those that have a transfer guarantee post Virto semester. And last but not least, affordability. So our semesters range depending on the location, but we do aim to be as affordable, if not much more affordable than a traditional four-year university in the States. Um, so from 15 to 25,000, as you can see here, there is sliding scale based on financial need. So that's referring to our opportunity grant. We also have an um, International Leadership Award, which is our scholarship, and we do accept federal financial aid as well. If you want any more information, you can find us on the web and on Instagram, and I'll put my information in the chat. Thanks, all. Awesome. Thank you so much. And next, we will hear from the University of Roehampton. Thank you. Let me just get my 
screen up. All right, oh, hopefully everyone can see that. Hi everyone, I'm Haley with University of Roehampton and we are considered London's campus university. There we go. So uh, recently we were ranked in the top 10 London universities and we are a very quick commute into central London. So approximately 30 minutes by bus or a quick 15 minutes by the tube. And we have a very proud history dating back over 175 years now. Here's a quick map just to show you um, where we are located, where the green building in Southwest London, right near Wimbledon. And then you can see all of the um, little graphics of central London, just to show you where we're located. So a few um, great facts about Roehampton. We do, um, just like other UK universities, have a three-year bachelor's degree. So you're not only saving time, but you're saving money as well by completing your degree a year early in the UK. And we accept US federal aid, so you can utilize FAFSA. And we have a lot of scholarships available, which I will touch base on um, throughout the presentation. We're very excited that you, the UK is bringing back the post-study work visa, meaning that after completing a degree with us in uh, London, you can um, decide to stay in the UK and have a sponsored visa for up to two years after your degree. And we have really great affordable um, accommodations available both on campus and off campus. All of the on-campus options are guaranteed for our um, first year students and they're all singles, which is really nice. And we have numerous sports clubs and societies available for students to get involved with. And we also have a lot of availability to work and intern in London on your student visa. And we are SAT and ACT optional. So just a, more, a few more facts and figures. We have approximately 141 nationalities represented on campus currently, and only 10% of our 8,000 student population are international students. So if you're someone looking to really get a London or um, England type experience and immerse yourself into being surrounded by the English, um, we are a great campus for you as only 10% of our students are international, but of that 10%, you'll be very unique and you also get to immerse yourself around um, students from all over the world. Here are our seven academic departments. We have the arts, business, education, humanities, life sciences, psychology, and social sciences available for you to choose from. And we're very proud that 66% of our research at Roehampton is of world-class standard. And in some of our departments, 100% of their research is world-class. And just a quick thing on how to apply. We are on the UCAS, similar to Common App, but for UK schools. And we also have a direct application on our website, which is free. And for entry requirements, we typically look for a 2.8 to a 3.0 under, or I'm sorry, high school GPA to apply for undergrad. And like I said, we're test optional. And we have just a few programs that require um, extra entry requirements. And for those currently, we're looking for an SAT subject test or AP exam. We will be changing that soon um, and updating it since they are doing away with the subject test. And then all of our dance programs um, do require either an in-person audition or a video audition. For tuition and fees, we are very affordable. So roughly for tuition and all fees included, you're looking at approximately 35,500 US dollars um, for the whole entire academic year. And then don't forget, you're only multiplying that by three to complete your bachelor's degree, not by four years. Like I said, we are FAFSA um, accepted, so you can utilize FAFSA and um, US federal loans to attend our school. And as you can see, we have numerous scholarships available. A lot of my US students do um, get some certain amount of merit-based scholarship based off of their high school GPA. And we have other options available for scholarships that you can see if you qualify for. Here's a quick map of our beautiful campus. Three of our four colleges are located on um, this graphic image. One is a little bit out of the way. And just to touch base again on this accommodation, we have a, a plethora of options available across our four colleges. 
And again, to touch base on college life on campus, we have a lot going on, which you'll find similar to a lot of US universities, only it's a great benefit to be able to experience everything in the UK and in London. And we have a lot of competitive sports available. Um, one thing I would like to highlight is that we have a new study play program where anyone who played US soccer or football abroad um, can uh, apply to be a member of our new study play program and team with the premier football club, Crystal Palace. And here's just a few more pictures to highlight how beautiful our Parkland campus in Southwest London is. And that is all. So thank you all so much for your time and listening. Great. Thank you so much. And next, we will move on to the SOAS University of London. Hi, everybody. I'm going to take you on a quick whistle stop tour of SOAS University of London. Uh, we are the leading university in the world for the studies of Africa, um, Asia and um, the Middle East. In terms of our programs, we're specialised in the social sciences and the humanities, and our main kind of approach is to look at studying global issues um, from the perspective of the most disadvantaged and underrepresented. In terms of why you might study um, at SOAS University of London, we're located in the heart of London. We're a global top 50 university for arts and humanities. We have world-class facilities. We have leading academics who are also practitioners in the field, small class sizes, a very flexible and interdisciplinary approach, which I'll go through more in more detail later, and a very diverse international engaged student population. In terms of our location, we're located right in the heart of London. You couldn't be any more central if you tried. Um, and around us, you'll find lots of different um, facilities such as um, different touristic sites, uh, museums, galleries, um, lots of different universities, um, which are part of the University of London, which we all share, and lots of transport links. In terms of our ranking, we're ranked sixth in the world for development studies, 13th in the world for anthropology, 18th in the world for politics, 19th in the UK for law, and number one in London for business um, and management. We're also ranked fifth in the UK for um, student staff ratio, which means on average, it's 11 students to one staff member. Um, and we're also ranked third in the world for peace and justice, and strong institutions, which is really core to our beliefs. These are just a few pictures of our campus and one of the standout sites on our campus is our library, which is a national research library and one of only five in the UK. Um, in terms of our accommodation, this is dotted all around the campus um, and it starts from 130 pounds per week, which is really, really cheap for in London. Um, and those will all be um, single occupancy rooms, but could have different size beds in them. Um, and we have catered and self-catered facilities. Those, as I say, are just dotted right around the campus, so we would be um, in the red dot there and all the accommodation is around us. In terms of our subject areas, these are all the subject areas that we teach, um, but you can double major, and so you can combine any of these areas together. And then we also allow you to audit classes from every single subject if you want to throughout your time with us. Um, so you can audit up to three extra classes per year, though I would say that's a heavy workload to have. In terms of the languages, we think this is very important to include languages, so we'll allow you to include languages all throughout your course. And we have over 30 different languages taught, and as you'll see, they're very different from the norm. In terms of our entry requirements, we look at the high school diploma, we look at SATs, ACTs, APs, dual enrollment credits, um, and we are test optional for this year. In terms of the cost, we're around £19,560, which is about $25,000, and all of our undergraduate programmes are the same price no matter which programme you're taking. And our living costs are between twelve and 14000 per year, though I always say that's kind of like saying how long is a piece of string, um, but that's about £16,000. Uh, we do accept the FAFSA loans, uh, GI Bill, and we do have international scholarships. Uh, we have students from around 135 different countries. We have 6,300 students on campus, 4,000 distance learners. And we're very pleased to say that 54% of our student body are actually from outside of the UK. So that's international EU students. In terms of our student body, they are very um, active, as I said, and engaged. We're known as a university of activists. So this means taking part in things like student protests, but it also means um, building different dialogue and discussion and educating people um, in different areas. 
In terms of London, which I'll just quickly touch on, uh, it is, uh, has the largest student population in the UK, so it's 350,000 students in the city. There are over 300 languages spoken, many of which are spoken on our campus, 17,000 music performances in over 300 venues, 250 festivals, um, so lots for you to explore and discover with us. And then lastly, I'll touch on our um, alumni who range across a number of different areas. So as you'll see here, ranges from things like the UN uh, to co-founders of particular centers, uh, to um, the arts, to media, to music and to sports. And then we do look at career support when you're with us. So it will be a range of different things from um, CV or what you'd call resume advice, uh, deciding on career paths, practice interviews, um, student ambassador jobs and different careers fairs that we host on campus. These are just some of the employers that we work with. And then I'll lastly touch on, you'll be part of the wider University of London group, which is 18 different universities um, who come together. And so you'll have lots of different facilities um, across the whole of London. Thank you. Great, thanks. And lastly, we will hear from the University of Glasgow. Perfect. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. Let's go ahead and pop up to Scotland. So my name is Jason Vai. I'm the Senior International Officer with the University of Glasgow. Um, based in Glasgow, Scotland, I think everybody's heard of Edinburgh. It's the capital of Scotland. Um, Glasgow is actually the largest city in Scotland and only about an hour away from Edinburgh. So if you've been lucky enough to, been, to have been to Edinburgh, you're close to Glasgow, but just not quite. Um, they're only an hour away. The two cities have a very soft and friendly rivalry, um, but it's only an hour away on the train. The trains run every 15 minutes. So you'll be spending plenty of time bopping around between the two. But the image that you see on your screen is from atop the bell tower on campus. And Glasgow actually means dear green place in Scots Gaelic. So you can see just how green of a city Glasgow really is. So if you do need a break from the hustle and bustle of city life and to go hug a tree, you have plenty of opportunity both in the city. And then if you look at the outskirts on the horizon in the image, you see the start of the Scottish lowlands. So you can go live your outlander fantasy only a quick car ride away if you need more of a more of an adventure. Um, and I will say, uh, if I'm if I don't get through all the information quick quickly enough, um, or if you hear something that kind of catches your fancy, there will be a QR code down at the bottom right hand screen. So feel free to scan that and pop your details in as we go along. A couple of quick facts about the university. We were founded in 1451. We are one of the four Scottish ancient universities which is a pretty nice distinction, um, just means we've been around for a long time. And to complement that, that ancient teaching tradition, we are quite well ranked. So if rankings are important to you, Glasgow might fit the bill. Um, we're currently ranked 67th in the world and 14th in the UK. We are a large institution, a large urban institution with 29,000 students from over 140 different countries, as well as a member of the prestigious Russell Group, um, which is a research intensive led collection of UK universities. And then the cool thing about Scotland is that the US education system is loosely based on the Scottish. So Scotland has a four year degree model very similar to the US. So if you're looking for a little bit of extra time and flexibility where you can change your mind within reason, Scotland might be a good match for you because it's still that four year degree structure. Now for anybody who's not been lucky enough to go to Scotland, Scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the world by Rough Guides in 2019, once again in 2021, um, very friendly, Scotland was voted the friendliest country in the world in 2019 by Rough Guides as well. So you can expect a pretty warm welcome um, arriving into Scotland. There's plenty of outdoor activities. The closest lock to campus is Loch Catron, which is just here on the screen. So in the morning, you can go for a hill walk and see the gorgeous Scottish views and then end your days back in a major city with all the creature comforts um, for what that means. But there's tons of art, live music, theater, comedy, um, as well as all the history involved in the city of Glasgow that you'll be a part of for sure. There's never a shortage of anything to do. Now the university is based in the West End of the city, which is a little bit of a quieter uh, student driven section of the city. So you have smaller cobblestone streets um, as you're walking to and from class about a 10 to 15 walk, um, 10 to 15 minute walk between the campus and your university residence. Um, so you're passing by the patisserie, the boulangerie. It's a very romantic European experience for sure. So it's a little bit of a quieter pace, um, very student friendly amenities um, with cheap takeaways after a night out as well as fancier bars. So if you wanna impress friends or parents that come to visit you, you have a pretty wide selection. And then over in the West End, 
Um, there are plenty of art galleries for you to take part of. There's Kelvin Grove Park, which actually backs up into the university and Kelvin Grove Park turns into a big music festival in the summer. So there's quite a lot of creative energy going on in the city and over in the West End where you'll be. Now the campus, uh, this is a bird's eye view of the campus. The main building is a castle. It looks like Hogwarts. There's no way to kind of ignore the, <laughs> ignore the comparison. Um, but the main building that you see here is a big feature of the city of Glasgow skyline. So it, the campus actually sits on top of a hill. So you get to look by the flagpole and look down at the rest of the city, which is really, really stunning. And the university owns quite a lot of buildings that you see in the photo on your screen. So down below, we've got our engineering building just next to the main building. Um, we've got geography and earth sciences. If you follow the road just a little bit down, we've got the medical campus just here. Um, so even though it's not completely connected, you're never more than about a takes about a 15 minute walk to walk the entire campus from furthest point to furthest point. Um, we are just across the street from the main building, we've got the 13 story library, which currently houses Shakespeare's manuscripts for any literature students that might be, might be a, a pretty fascinating resource for you to use. Um, and then we've got the Fraser building, which is like the student union where you'll find the bookstore, you'll find a place to grab a coffee or a sandwich on your way to class, and then as well as a, a campus doctor. So you don't have to go too far to get everything that you need. Uh, Glasgow has over 500 degree combinations, so you can major, you can double major, you can major minor. Um, the only thing that we don't offer is fine art, so we wouldn't be the best bet if you're looking for painting or sculpting. Um, and then entry requirements, if you're doing the IB diploma, we're looking for a 32 to 38 on your IB diploma. Your IB diploma is sufficient if that is the case. If you're not doing the IB diploma, that's perfectly fine. With the U.S. curriculum, we are looking for three AP tests with at least a four in a relevant subject to the degree that you're applying to study, you can replace one of those AP tests with either the SAT or the ACT. Um, and then if you've been impacted by COVID as far as test taking opportunities, we will be going test optional and we'll be looking for a 3.5 GPA and looking to see that you've taken um, honors, AP or dual enrollment courses that are relevant. And then very quickly, last slide, um, in-state tuition tends to give us a run for our money, um, but out-of-state tuition, we tend to be a little bit cheaper. All right, thanks guys. Great, thank you so much. So we do have a few minutes left, and now that we've heard from everyone, uh, I wanna invite all of our presenters to turn their cameras back on, and I'm gonna pose a couple questions to the, to the group. We'll go in the same order, and each school will have about 20, 30 seconds to respond, just so our attendees can learn a little bit more about each institution that we just heard from. So I will quickly pose the first question of what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And I will start first with uh, Goldsmiths University of London. Sure. Um, so uh, I would perhaps say one, um, you know, obviously everyone in this um, call is an international school. So clearly you're looking to go abroad. If it's not in the cards to do a full degree program abroad, there's tons of different resources for um, doing a semester while you're in college or a couple of weeks abroad, maybe an internship. Uh, Diversity Abroad is a really great company um, that can connect you with scholarships and things like that. So um, that would be one tip that I have. Great, thanks. And next, the University of Manchester. Right, I would say for uh, students to use us as resources, that's what we're here for. We're here to answer questions. There's a lot of information out there on the internet that some of, some of the times it's not accurate or it's not up to date. And we typically have the most up to date information. So if there are questions that you have, come to us directly. That's what we're here for. We have our emails in the chat box. We really wanna hear from you. So reach out to us if you have any questions. Great, thank you. Next, Verto Education. Um, yeah, I think just talk to people in your network um, talk with people who have traveled abroad and studied abroad and kind of get a feel for their experiences where they've gone and all of that. Um, I think that goes a long way, especially if it is friends or family friends that you know, I'm um, just listening to their experiences. I've never met anyone that's regretted studying abroad <laughs> before. So use your network. Awesome. Uh, next would be the University of Roehampton. Um, 
To go along with what Will from Goldsmith said, um, you know, it may not be in the cards for you to come for your whole entire undergraduate degree, but there's so many options available out there, so many scholarships. So you could even look into transferring um, universities to come abroad halfway through your degree, or even coming abroad for a postgrad degree, which um, some a lot of postgraduate degrees can be completed in as little as one year. So something to think about um, because it really is a great opportunity to study abroad. Great, thanks. Uh, next, uh, SOAS University of London. Yeah, I would say um, test out the subject areas that you wanna do. So um, there's lots of um, what we call MOOCs, so massive open online courses out there that you can do for free. They run for about two to four weeks. They take up about two hours of your time per week. Um, and you can try out a course and see if it's right for you. Plus, it can avoid you getting into that Netflix or um, Amazon Prime wormhole that we all seem to be in. All righty, thank you. And lastly, the University of Glasgow. Yeah, I think the college search is so stressful and there's so much pressure on you guys to make the right decision or that every decision is really criticized. So I'd like to kind of counsel you to remember that you don't want to go to a school that doesn't want you first and foremost. So whatever kind of uh, decision ends up being, um, go, with what, go with what you're looking for. Don't worry about so much about the prestige or the reputation that you might have a place from, from going to a particular school. You'll find a place that's right for you. Awesome, all great pieces of advice. Uh, looks like we'll have time for one more question. So I'm gonna ask, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus or just about your school? So. Again, we will start first with Goldsmiths, University of London. Yeah, so we put out a ton of different events in conjunction with the City of London, uh, including the London International Festival of Theater. Um, we also put on Pure Gold, which is our music festival every year. Um, we have amazing students in our music department, James Blake and Katie B. Uh, Blur went to Goldsmiths. So we have a lot of, um, you know, the next best thing could be um, at our music festival. So that's one fun little event. Great, thanks. Uh, University of Manchester? Yeah, so similar to Goldsmiths, um, you know, when you're in a city like Manchester that's so diverse, you want to incorporate what's going on in the city with your students. So there's plenty of uh, events happening in the city that students can be a part of, including the um, uh, Italian procession, which is the Italian um, community in Manchester will lead a procession. Uh, down to City Hall and it's going to be full of food and uh, lots of their traditions. There's one for Holy for the Indian Festival. Uh, there's the, the, the Lunar New Year. Um, there's a bunch of different festivals like that in, within the city. So that's something that the students can look forward to participating in through their, through their year. Great. Verto Education? Um, one cool event or tradition, I guess, that we have um, is in our South Pacific semester when our students arrive in Fiji. The community members there have a traditional kava drinking ceremony um, to welcome all of our students, which I think is really awesome. Our students love it. Kava is this kind of gross tasting um, root drink, um, but it's a very traditional Fijian um, whole ceremony. Awesome. Next, uh, University of Roehampton. Um, similar to in Harry Potter, where all of the houses compete for a house cup, we have something similar on campus at Roehampton, where all four of our colleges compete every academic year for a college cup. And um, so it's a really great way to feel very um, much like a part of the community and see if your college wins every year. Awesome. Uh, next, so as University of London. Well, I'd say being in London, there's pretty much something on every day. But one of my favorite things that happens on campus is really simple. There's a Harry Krishna uh, man who comes out and gives out free food every day. Um, and all of the students come to get food from him. All the lecturers come to get food from him. All the people who work in the canteen come to get food from him because there's no one in the canteen anyway. And so it's just a really nice experience. Great. And lastly, University of Glasgow. Yeah, in the um, in the main building that looks like a castle, there are two different courtyards, and the grass is really well maintained, <laughs> and that's because it's a big student superstition that you do not touch the grass, uh, even as a joke, until you until after you take your final exams. So graduation is actually held 
inside the grounds of the campus and you'll see students flooding the grass on graduation day once you can finally safely touch the grass after your exams have been taken. Great. So that's all the time we have. I want to thank our panelists for uh, being here today. Thanks so much, as well as our attendees for taking the time to join us. When you close out of here, there will be a quick four question survey, if you wouldn't mind filling that out just to uh, so we can get some feedback. We always look to make improvements on our event. We'd appreciate that. There is another hour of sessions tonight, so feel free to sign up for those. And the recordings from all sessions tonight will be, be available at strivescan.com slash Carolinas. So without any further ado, I'm going to end the session and thank you for every thank you everyone for being here tonight. Have a good one.